Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to my course Physics 1. So this course is generally made for undergraduate level BTEC degree students. Myself, Gopal Chakravarti, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Greater Kolkata College of Engineering and Management, Baripur. So uh, you can meet me personally at my college premises, Ground Floor Physics Lab. You can also send me a mail regarding your doubt or query on this topic or any video lectures that I up uploaded to my given mail address that is godphysics6 at the rate gmail.com and gopal dot chakraborty underscore gkcem at the rate gisgroup dot org I have a youtube channel so uh, the students you may subscribe my youtube channel for more videos okay so i have already uploaded lots of video on the topic physics one uh, as per mark out syllabus so students you just go through that videos uh, and if you feel any doubt and any query just send me a mail or contact me in the college so i am the subject teacher for this topic now uh, the course pages are www.mackoutexam.net and www.mackoutwb.ac.in You can find the syllabus for the subject physics is already uploaded in the university website. So uh, the title of this course is physics 1 subject code is BSPH 101 it is under the category of basic science course and the course has a credit for three lecture per week and one tutorial per week so this course is generally made for undergraduate level BTEC degree students of first year so uh, computer science, civil, mechanical, these departmental students will going to study this course in their all semester and alternatively the electronics and electrical departmental students will going to study this course in their even semester both for the odd and even semester the syllabus for the subject physics one is same uh, but the subject code in that case is BSPH201 today uh, the topic that I will going to discuss are uh, one dimensional time independent Schrodinger equation for a free particle and three dimensional time independent Schrodinger equation for a free particle and one dimensional time independent Schrodinger equation for particle acted upon by a force field and also the three dimensional time independent Schrodinger equation for a particle acted upon by a force field so uh, these all topics are also under module 4 that is quantum mechanics so a prerequisite for these topics are elementary idea of quantum mechanics 
fundamental idea of mathematical calculation and quantum mechanical operators now the course objectives are idea about time independent schrodinger equation characteristic of schrodinger equation and its solution so uh, after completion of this course students will able to know the basic idea of one dimensional and three dimensional time independent schrodinger equation and its solution for a free particle without presence of any force field they will also able to know the basic idea of one dimensional and three dimensional time independent schrodinger equation and its solution for a particle acted upon by a force field so uh, these are the possible course outcome so uh, before i try to start with the today's topic i would like to remind you that uh, in schrodinger in 1926 consider that if a particle has a wave property so it's a wave, matter wave there should be some sort of wave function which can describe by a space time behavior of the quantum mechanical particle so as an example maybe electron so uh, therefore schrodinger equation wave equation describe the behavior of that space time behavior of a moving particle associated with the matter waves under different physical situation so these wave equation can be developed both for time dependent and time independent states so uh, the time dependent wave equation that i have already derived in my last video so for today's class what is time independent wave equation so uh, you know that for time independent wave equation or time independent state the potential energy v of a particle does not depends on the time explicitly so uh, the potential energy v uh, of the or the force capital a f equals to minus of grad v at the representation of the force with the potential so uh, that force uh, acting on this particle uh, varies only on the position of the particle so uh, does the wave equation that can be described only the position of the particle is called time independent schrodinger equation so uh, today i will going to derive that time independent schrodinger equation for one dimensional case as well as for three dimensional case so uh, students uh, those have missed the last day video class lessons uh, please please go through that video class lessons because uh, the process is almost same uh, as we have derived the schrodinger equation for time dependent case so here uh, that video will also help to learn uh, all the details regarding schrodinger equation and that will help the today's class to understand the how we will going to derive the independence time independence schrodinger wave equation so the first one that is uh, one dimensional time independence schrodinger wave equation for a free particle so uh, to derive that time independent equation the basic idea is that you have to start with that schrodinger time dependent wave equation okay so uh, in that case you know that wave function psi uh, that can be expressed by the product of two separate function one is for position only and another is for time only so uh, then you take this time derivative and space derivative and ultimate what is our objective our objective is to substitute the value of 
time part in the time uh, dependent wave equation okay so if you can replace the time uh, part of the time dependent equation so that uh, equation makes that uh, Schrodinger time dependent wave equation to a time independent one so I will show you now how we are going to derive that Schrodinger one dimensional time independent Schrodinger equation so uh, the procedure is that a uh, one dimensional time independent Schrodinger equation for a free particle that means where the potential V equals to zero well uh, so now uh, you can write that you know the time dependent Schrodinger equation is minus h card square by twice m del 2 psi del x2 equals to i h card del psi del t so uh, this is one dimensional time dependent Schrodinger equation so uh, in above equation uh, is a dependent on both space and time okay so uh, as psi is retained as psi equals to that I have considered psi equals to a to the power i k x minus omega t uh, so uh, psi can be expressed as a product of two separate function okay one is for position and another is for time so uh, you can represent that the position that uh, by u function of x and the time that is a function of t so uh, you can write psi uh, xt equals to u function of x and a function of t so uh, if you take the space derivative positional derivative of psi with respect to x that will give you del psi del x equals to f du dx so f uh, which is a function of time now behave like a constant and the second order space derivative with respect to position will give you del 2u the del x square and uh, that value equals to f of t uh, d2u dx square so and the time derivative uh, with of the wave function psi will give us del psi del t equals to u function of x which now behaves like a constant df dt so these are the first order and second order space derivative of wave function psi and the first order time derivative of wave function psi that is represented by equation number 8.30 now uh, according to the quantum theory the energy e is related to its frequency nu by e equals to h nu okay so uh, when nu equals to e by h so uh, omega t minus e t that means 2 pi nu into t that can be represented as 2 pi e by h into t minus e into t by h cut because h by 2 pi is a reduced Planck constant so that will give us e uh, t by h cut so now and the momentum p equals to h by lambda so 1 by lambda equals to p by h so uh, kx that value uh, can be written as kx equals to 2 pi by lambda into x that's equals to 2 pi uh, p by h I have substituted the value of lambda 2 pi p by h uh, into x that's equals to px by h cut now using the value of omega t and kx in the wave function psi we get psi a uh, function of x and t that's equals to a e to the power i kx minus omega t so this uh, equation can be written as a e to the power i px by h cut minus uh, et by h cut so you can take 1 by h cut common that will give you a e to the power i by h cut uh, px minus et so this is the equation of psi 
now again uh, you try to find out the time derivative uh, first order time derivative of that wave function psi that will give you del psi del t equals to i e by h card a e to the power i by h card p x minus e t so that's equals to minus i by h card e of psi so uh, that can be represented as if you substitute the value of psi that will give you minus i by h card e u function of x and f function of time so uh, now substituting uh, equation 8.30 and 8.31 in equation 8.15 that will give us h card square by that means uh, from here we try to find out the value of second order space derivative of psi and first order time derivative of psi in the equation of time dependence Schrodinger equation for one dimensional case so if we substitute that value we get h card square by twice m f of t d2 u dx square equals to i h card within bracket minus i by h card e e a function of x a function of time t time so or you can write h card square by twice m d2 u dx2 equals to e function into u function of x only so or rearranging you can write d2 u dx square plus uh, twice m by h card square e into u function of x that's equals to zero so uh, this equation ultimately represents the one dimensional time independent Schrodinger equation for a free particle second one uh, the one dimensional time independent Schrodinger equation for a free particle acted upon by a force field so here uh, for the last problem that I have considered that no uh, force field is associated with that system so for that case the potential energy V is zero so as here I have considered that uh, that particle is acted upon by some force field that means v value is not equals to zero uh, so f equals to as uh, minus of red v so here the potential energy exists so as we have the one dimensional time dependent Schrodinger equation for a particle moving under a force field uh, derivable from the potential v that is minus h card square by twice m del 2 psi del x2 plus v function of x into psi that's equals to i h card del psi del t okay so uh, i have already derived uh, that equation in details in my last day video class so uh, those who have missed those class please go through uh, once again uh, to know how we will derive this equation so here and straight way I have considered that equation that is time dependent Schrodinger equation now uh, if v is not a function of time then the above equation can be separated into a time to a position only so uh, it is the independent part and time dependent part okay so uh, that wave function psi that can be represented as a product of uh, position and space uh, for position or space or and another one is time so uh, we consider u is a function of position and f is a function of time uh, so psi that wave function can be represented or written as u function of x into a function of time now uh, again the uh, procedure is same uh, that means you have to find out the first order space derivative of the wave function psi and the second order space derivative with the uh, from or the wave function psi and again the first order time derivative of the wave function psi 
So uh, the first order space derivative with respect to x of psi will give us del psi del x equals to f of t du dx, where f is a constant, behave like a constant. The second order space derivative will give us del 2 psi del x2 equals to a function of time d2u dx2. So, the first order time derivative will give us del psi del t equals to u function of x df dt. So, here the u will behave like a constant. Now, according to the quantum theory, the energy can be uh, related to nu frequency as E equals to H nu. So, nu can be written as nu equals to E by H. And the omega t that equals to omega equals to 2 pi nu. So, omega equals to 2 pi E by H cut into t. So, E, so e 2 pi into E by H into t. So, E t by H cut. This is the value of omega t. And you know uh, the value of the momentum that can be retained as per de Broglie wavelength uh, that is p equals to h by lambda. So 1 by lambda equals to p by h. So from there you can write kx equals to sk is the wave number or propagation constant that is 2 pi by lambda into x. So from there px by h cut. Now, uh, using the value of omega t and kx in the expression of the wave function psi, we can retain as the psi of function of x and t equals to a e to the power i kx minus omega t. So, that is equals to a e to the power i px by h cut minus e t by h cut. So, if you take the 1 by h cut common, so uh, we will uh, represent the wave function psi as a e to the power i by h cut px minus e into t. So, uh, now uh, try to find out the time derivative of wave function psi. So, the time derivative gives us del psi del t equals to minus of i e by h cut a e to the power i by h cut px minus e into t. So, that is equals to minus i by h cut e into u function of x and a function of time. Now, again substituting the value of uh, the del 2 psi del x square and del psi del t uh, in that equation of time dependent Schrodinger equation gives us minus h cut square by twice m f of t d2 u dx square plus v function of x u function of f and a function of time equals to i h cut into minus i into e by h cut u function of x a function of time. So, uh, from there both side the a function of time that's uh, value will cancel out and what you will get you will get uh, d2 u dx square plus twice m by h square square into e minus v into u function of x that's equals to zero so this equation is represents one dimensional time independent Schrodinger equation for a particle being acted upon by a force field travel from the potential V. Next one, the uh, three dimensional time independent Schrodinger equation for a free particle. So, uh, the process is same. So, uh, our main objectives are that we have to uh, substitute the value of the time part in the time dependent Schrodinger wave equation. So, again we have to start with the time dependent Schrodinger equation for three dimensional case and as I have told you or I have discussed or explained you earlier case that here you have to consider all the space derivatives uh, that is del psi del x, uh, del psi del y, del psi uh, del z or the, again the second order space derivative into taking into account because uh, here uh, that actual wave function is also now can be written as psi equals to a to the power i into k dot r minus omega t where r is the uh, r 
equals to x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap that means which also includes all the three coordinates so here also the procedure is same you have to take the all space second order space derivative uh, including all the coordinates x y z and again substituting that value in the time dependent wave equation and ultimately you will get that time independent wave equation so i will show you nice step by step how we're going to derive this so the uh, first one that is time dependent three dimensional time dependent Schrodinger equation for a free particle so here uh, as it is a free particle that means the v value is zero so uh, as we know the three dimensional time dependent Schrodinger equation it can be written as minus h square square by twice m grad square of psi equals to i h square del psi del t now again uh, as we know that the wave function psi can be represented as the product of the space and time function so that means psi uh, which itself is a function of r and t that equals to u function of r and a function of t and so first uh, find out the first order space derivative with respect to x and then second order space derivative with respect to x so del psi del x equals to f uh, function of time which behaves like a constant du dx so the second order derivative d2 psi dx2 will give us uh, ft uh, d2u dx square so similarly for the y coordinate and z coordinate you can write uh, d2 psi dy2 equals to f function of time d2 dy2 and d2 psi dz2 equals to a function of time d2 u dz2 now uh, the three dimensional uh, wave equation that means to find out you have to operate the laplacian operator over psi so grad square psi will give you del 2 psi del x2 plus del 2 psi del y2 plus del 2 psi del z2 so that means d2u dx2 plus d2u dy2 plus d2u dz2 uh, whole into f of t so f of t into grad square u again uh, the, as the energy e equals to h nu so from there uh, you know that nu can be written as e by uh, e by h so that value from omega t gives us e t by h cut and the momentum uh, h by lambda as per de Broglie wavelength gives us uh, the kx equals to uh, px by h cut so similarly you can write ky equals to p suffix y into y by h square and k suffix z into z equals to p suffix z into z by h square so uh, now the wave equation becomes psi function of position and time equals to a e to the power i k dot r minus omega t so in that case k dot r uh, you can write uh, p into x plus p into y plus p into z by h cut okay so first uh, p represent along the direction of x so p suffix x into x plus p suffix y into y plus p suffix z into z by h cut minus et by h cut so ultimately we will get psi uh, function of r and t that's equals to a to the power i by h cut uh, p uh, dot r minus et so uh, from there you can write the first order time derivative of psi del psi by del t equals to a uh, whole into minus i e by h cut into e to the power i by h cut p dot r minus et into t so that's equals to minus i e by h cut into psi so if you substitute the value of psi you get minus i e by h cut u function of r and a function of time now using uh, substituting the value of grad square psi and del 2 and del psi del t uh, in the equation of time dependence sorting our equation gives us minus h cut square by twice m f of t uh, grad square u minus i h cut within bracket minus i e by h cut u function of r and a function of time so uh, from both sides uh, the function of time that will be cancelled out and ultimately we will get that uh, grad square u plus twice m e by h square square of u 
equals to zero. So this equation represents three-dimensional time-independent Schrodinger equation for a free particle. Next one, uh, the three-dimensional time-independent Schrodinger equation for a particle acted upon by a force field. So uh, the three-dimensional case, uh, as the particle is uh, acted upon by a force field, so Vd not equals to zero. So as we know that three-dimensional time-dependent Schrodinger equation for a particle moving under a potential V, that can be written as uh, minus h square square by twice m rad square plus V function of R, this whole into psi, uh, that's equals to I h square del psi del t. Now, if the potential V uh, does not explicitly depends on time, then the total energy E is constant. So the wave function psi can be expressed uh, as a product of time dependent and time independent part. So psi uh, function of R and T that is equals to U function of R and F function of T. So uh, from there you can write the second order derivative space derivative of X that can be uh, written as uh, del 2 psi del X2 equals to A function of time which behaves like a constant del 2 U del X2. So similarly, uh, you can write for y coordinate and z coordinate as the second order space derivative del 2 psi del y2 equals to f del 2 u del y2 and del 2 psi del z2 equals to f del 2 u del z2. So from there, the Laplacian operator grad square, or, uh, if you operate over psi, that value will give you del 2 uh, grad square psi equals to del 2 psi by del x2 plus del 2 psi by del y2 plus del 2 psi by del x2 del z2 so ultimately that gives you del 2 u del x square plus del 2 del y group plus del 2 u del z2 of our f of t so that means grad square u f function of t so uh, now again as you know that uh, the omega t that can be represented by E uh, t by h card and the momentum that can be uh, represent by h by lambda from where you can write uh, k uh, suffix x uh, into x equals to 2 pi by lambda into x that means p suffix x into x by h card similarly for y and z you can write the same thing so uh, from there uh, that psi value will give you psi equals to a e to the power i by h card p dot r minus e into t now take the time derivative uh, first order time derivative with respect to t will give you del psi del t equals to minus i e by h card a e to the power i by h card p dot r minus e t so that equals to uh, r minus i e by h card u function of r and a function of t so again you now substitute the value of grad square psi and del psi del t uh, in the time dependent Schrodinger wave equation okay so if you substitute that value you will get minus a square square by twice m grad square u f of t plus v function of r u function of r f of t uh, equals to i h card within bracket minus i e by h card u function of r a function of t so from both side the function of t that will be cancelled out and ultimately rearranging you will get grad square u plus twice m by h square square within bracket e minus v into u that's equals to zero so these represent the three dimensional time independent Schrodinger equation for a particle moving under a potential field which is independent of time so uh, these are the important books uh, that you uh, consider as a reference books the evaluation process is same you have to appear for a 70 marks in semester exam and 30 marks internal exam so i uh, hope all of you have understand uh, today's class and enjoyed also uh, and in next day i will uh, going to solve some applications of schrodinger equation okay uh, so thank you